The UK has got zero unemployment. I used last year's, my last year's wealth predictions to save me millions of pounds and to make millions more pounds. Hello, what does your 2023 look like? You haven't got a clue? You wish you knew? Listen on. Welcome to this week's edition of Money Matters because as you know, I passionately believe that money does matter. I've been doing wealth predictions for many, many years now. I used last year's, my last year's wealth predictions to save me millions of pounds and to make millions more pounds. So what I want to share with you today is my wealth predictions for 2023. Probably many of you have sat at home, New Year's resolutions, what are we going to do this year? How is 2023 going to be different from all the previous years of your life? So let's get going straight away. And I'm going to say this up front. I'm going to make a full copy of this Wealth Predictions available to each and every one of you. There'll be a download link in the description below. So just look under the video, download your copy. So here we go, Wealth Predictions for 2023. I'll let you read the introduction. I'll let you read the table of contents to you. So here's my first one. Saudi Arabia set to join BRICS. And why does that matter? So first up, what's BRICS? Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. So Saudi Arabia and a few other countries have applied to join BRICS. Why does that matter? Well, broadly speaking, that's 40% of the world's population and roughly 40% of the world's GDP. But critically, it's the major oil producers and the major gold producers. So the speculation is this, that group, BRICS plus, BRICS plus Saudi Arabia, is set to launch their own currency. So not an individual national currency, but a, potentially a global reserve currency. And that would rival the dollar. So it could potentially replace the dollar or it might run alongside the dollar. But Saudi Arabia has already said for the first time since the early 1970s, oil can be purchased in currencies other than the dollar. So this is massive news, huge impact on all the financial markets, especially the financial derivatives markets, because their new currency will be backed, physically backed, by gold and oil. So it'll be on the gold and oil standard. So the days of just being able to print money may well be over. So my first prediction is that physical assets such as gold and property will rise significantly in value. And be very careful about the stock market, but I'm going to come on to that. Number two, strikes and industrial action. You can't move at the moment without getting, you know, the rail workers are on strike, the nurses are on strike, the teachers are on strike, the postman's on strike, everybody's on strike. Why does that matter? It matters for this reason. The UK has got zero unemployment. Essentially, for each job, there isn't an applicant. Now, normally, in a recession, you'd expect high unemployment, 10, 15%, something like that. Our current employment rate is about two to 3%. And there's actually more jobs than there are people. So if you're looking to move jobs or get a job, you've got a choice of job. So how does the employer compete by putting up the, putting up the salary? It's a very unusual recession, if indeed you'd even call it a recession. So my prediction is this. Private sector employees will pay 10% plus in terms of pay increases. Public sector, so doctors, nurses, all that kind of stuff, government workers, much though the government would like to keep the pay increase way below the level of inflation, they can't. Because if they don't pay the money, those people will just leave and go and work somewhere else. So my prediction is this, strikes and industrial unrest continue to escalate and intensify for the first four to six months of 2023. Private sector employers get double digit pay rises. Curry's, for example, just paid 16%, 1-6%. Uh, the government attempts to control, but it fails. High wages, zero unemployment, means we're gonna see further ongoing inflation. This is an inflationary spiral. So what does that do? Well, inflation inflates the value of assets like properties and destroys the value of loans. So it's very good if you're borrowing money, it's very bad if you're lending money to somebody else, and specifically, it's gonna increase property rental costs. A recent BBC article said, current rent increases are the highest in seven years. And my prediction is that's gonna get even worse, even faster if you're a renter, or even better, more quickly, if you're a landlord. On to number three. This is all about interest rates. Now, interest rates 
the media is talking about the speed of increase. But as I'm recording this, the Bank of England base rate is 3.5%. Now, by historical standards, that's incredibly low. If you look back over the last many years, you'll see an average interest rate is 7 or 8%. Now, when I started property investing in the early 1980s, 40 years ago, you can see here from this chart, in the early 1980s, it wouldn't be unusual to get a mortgage at 15, 16%. So I bought my first property, 269A Roman Road for 9,000 pounds, with a mortgage that had an interest rate of, I can't actually remember if it was 15 or 16%, but it was that order of magnitude. Now, what I did, over the next two years as I did that property up. I bought it with the intention to sell it. So I bought it for 9,000 pounds, spent a couple of thousand pounds on it, and I sold it for 32,000 pounds. Even with a mortgage interest rate of 16%, and we're nowhere near that at the moment. We're at four, five, maybe 6%, depending on what it is that, you know, what you're trying to do. But at 16%, I still made a monstrous profit. What did I do with that? I bought my next property, well, two properties later actually, I bought a bungalow, three bedroom bungalow, bought it for 78,000 pounds, owned it for 42 weeks. 42 weeks later, I sold it for more than 42,000 pounds more than I paid for it. So I bought it for 78, sold it for 120, it's a thousand pounds a week profit. Now at the time, that was, so my, my bungalow, my property made roughly four times what I did from full-time work. So my question to you is during 2023, if you know what you're doing, if you're educated, informed, supported property investor, can you actually afford to work? Because if one property makes four times more money than you do from working, what are you doing working? You know, with all due respect. So my prediction is UK base rates go maybe another 1% higher. If you want to read the reasons why they can't go much more than that, government debt and so on, please download the predictions, read the full report. So. My expectation, my prediction is that we're going to see around about 4.5% around about the middle of 2023. But inflation is going to remain persistently high, persistently elevated. And I'm afraid we're headed for something called stagflation. So my specific prediction is that interest rates have got a cap around about 4.5%. If the government takes them higher than that, it's actually going to bankrupt the government in terms of debt repayment, through government debt repayment. If you've got cash, please, 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 real interest rates are negative because even if you think, oh, that's good, interest rates are now 4% or 5% or something, I can get 5% interest on my money. If inflation is 10, 12, 15%, so you're getting five, but the cost of everything is going up by 10 or 15, you're negative five or negative 10%. So negative real interest rates, Bank of England can't push in interest rates up too much higher, can't control inflation, we get stagflation, which is a combination of high inflation and low growth. And please, please, please be very, very careful where you put your cash. Pause button. Well, actually, I'm still talking. But what I want you to do is decide, do you want to be in the top 3% of people that become wealthy in the world? Or are you content to stay in the 97%? Because 97% of people watching our videos don't subscribe and they don't hit the notification bell. So it's dead simple. You never want to miss another one of these videos that are designed to make you wealthy for free. Stop whatever you're doing, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and now let's get back to the content. Okay, so that's some of the like dire economic news and what it means to a lot of people. And I'm, you know, I'm sorry if you're one of those people that's getting your savings eroded by inflation, but do something about it. Let's move on now to number four, baby boomers. I'm the last of the baby boomers, 1964. So the post-war generation, oh my God, we're not dead. Let's all have lots of children. I'm the last one of those. Not literally the last one, but you know what I mean. I'm towards the end of that period. I'm 58. Most baby boomers are in their 60s or even 70s. So they're looking to exit their businesses. 20 years ago now, roughly, I bought a business from a baby boomer. This was a, a couple that had been running a care home. They wanted to retire to Cyprus. So this is called Donera, it's in Scotland. We bought it for 450,000 as a care home, changed the planning use to residential, spent about 120,000 pounds on it. So let's say total 600,000 pounds and it immediately valued at over a million. So that's a 400,000 pound profit. You might think, well, Paul, that's fine, but that's 20 years ago, what about now? Well, here is one, Red Main House, that we actually purchased this, well, not this year, last year, 2022. Same thing, 
a couple had been running it as a, a guest house, a B&B. &B. We bought it at a very good price and we turned it into an unmanned service accommodation. So no jumping out of bed at six o'clock in the morning to fry eggs for the guests or anything like that. That one property is gonna make more than a hundred thousand pounds profit comfortably this year. Read the report for the full detail. But the point is, there's all these businesses that have got property where the owner wants to exit. You can get it at a great price and you can make great money. So purchasing businesses, top tip for 2023. Stock markets, would you bet your shirt on them? Bottom line, no. I pulled all my money very publicly out of the stock markets in October, November, 2021. So my prediction is that stock market's gonna have another torrid year. 2022 was the worst year for many stock markets in the last hundred. So please, don't think the pain's over. But I speak to a number of investors who think, oh, it's gonna recover now. No, all the fundamentals are the wrong way. Read the report to find out why. My prediction is that many stock market investors will globally will throw good money after bad. Stock markets globally, I believe, are gonna have another very difficult year and show potentially significant declines. Now, this is particularly relevant to you, even if you're not thinking, well, I'm not a stock market investor, why do I care? You do care, because most of you watching this will have a pension that's invested in the stock market. So if you're not a stock market investor, you probably are through your pension. And sadly, this really does sad me to say this, my specific prediction is that a number of pension funds are gonna have real issues over the next three to six months in terms of even continuing to exist. So the, but the, the government may well have to bail out various pension funds or just let them crash and burn. I don't know what they're gonna do. Number six, is gold a safe haven? Well, I very publicly put millions of pounds into gold, out of the stock market, into gold. And at the time I'm recording this, my gold investments from around about 14 months ago are up 20%, up 20%. Prediction number six, I'll continue to add to my physical gold holdings during 2023. Low side, I expect 10%, but if we do see this BRICS plus Saudi Arabia gold and oil back currency, potentially you could see an upside on gold of five or even 10 times. So imagine you put 100K into gold and in a year's time it's worth a million quid. You'd be kicking yourself if you didn't do it, but we're all big boys and girls, we're all grown ups. Get your own advice, make your own decisions. I'm telling you what I think is gonna happen. This isn't financial advice, it's guidance. This is my view of the future. Okay, number seven, clearly not transitory, inflation. The Bank of England 12 months ago said during 2022, inflation would peak at 5% and fall back to 2% by Christmas. Well, they got that wrong, didn't they? And I can't see anything that's gonna cause inflation to come down quickly, but they're still saying it's gonna be 2% by Christmas 2023. Well, that's sounding like a broken record. So my prediction, and this is a difficult one to call, I'm not saying inflation won't come down a bit from maybe 10.7, which is where it is now, to seven, eight percent. I'm struggling to see scenarios in which it gets down to 2% within the next year. So my two top wealth uh, management priorities are to hedge against inflation, and indeed leverage that inflation. Because inflation is the property investor's best friend. So for me, more property, more gold, no stocks and shares, thank you very much. Or at least not yet. If the index has crashed enough, I might. So inflation, I think, is gonna be a persistent problem and stagflation, I've already said it. UK residential rental income, up or down? Well, Manchester, 2022, 20% increase. The BBC is saying the highest rental increases we've seen for the last seven years. So rent is going up, why? Not enough properties, specifically not enough rental properties, huge demand, no supply, lots of crocodile tears if you're a renter, I'm afraid. So shortage of rental properties, I would see double digits outside London, 10% plus, and in London, maybe seven, eight percent rental increases. So UK property prices, which way are they going? Well, Savills are saying 10% down, but look at the stats. The property prices year on year are still going up as I'm recording this. And look at the detail stats for Yorkshire. Look at the detail stats for Wales. Look at the detail stats for many, many parts of the country. So it isn't a question of property prices going up or down. It's a question of what are property prices doing in your area? But for instance, last year we bought a 200,000 pound property for 160,000 pounds. We spent 30,000 pounds on it, so our total spend was 190,000 pounds and it ended up getting revalued at 300,000 pounds. So if you can buy something crudely, if you know what you're doing for 200, but then it's worth 300, why do you care about a 10% prediction? So read the detail, but fundamentally for me, 
I want you to have two things in your mind. Property investing is a long-term game. Shelter KPMG, so the average property in the UK is gonna be worth 900,000 by 2034. Not buying property that increases in value by 300% over the next decade or so could be the worst decision you ever make. So property prices continue to increase in the medium to long term. Could there be a five or 10% correction during 2023? Maybe, just maybe. But I believe that property is one of the solidest best long-term capital appreciation, short-term rental income profits combination that you're ever going to see. And so finally, wealth through property. I believe that the opportunity to become wealthy through property is as real as ever. Massive population increase, anti-landlord legislation pushing amateur landlords out of the market. Learn how to do it properly. So ultimately, if you want to get my full 2023 predictions, I've given you a whistle-stop tour there. I hope they're useful. Go into the link down below, download the full 2023 predictions, see what you think. Comments in the chat box below, I'd love to see what you think. I know some of my predictions are a bit controversial. Use them to make money. I used my predictions last year to make millions of pounds. And my intention is to do the same thing this year. I hope you will too. My name's Paul Smith. You've been wonderful. Enjoy the wealth predictions and I'll see you next time.